second last leadership ever. All right, we're talking about. Intelligence questionnaire, like IQ test. Yes, that's right. So this is intelligence. Quantity. This is it, no questionnaire. Intelligence questionnaire. Yeah. So yeah, just your height, how you does that IQ, work out? Sure. It's a really a working out of how intelligent you are, what you know. Yeah. All right. But we've since we've gone from a world that focused purely on intelligence to we've developed now emotional intelligence. What's emotional intelligence? Interpersonal skills, though. Sorry? It's like interpersonal skills, see so how it relates to other people. That's right, mm -hmm. interpersonal skills, that's right. So they, they were pumping out doctors with IQ who can have all the understanding of all diseases and stuff like that, and then they don't know how to speak to people, mm -hmm. or they're rude, or they're. And so now most industries are going, hold on, hold on, you do, if you, especially if you're working with people, service industry, mm -hmm. doctors, lawyers, engineers, are, you need to learn to work with people. Mm. So just having all the medical understanding is not mm. good enough. Mm -hmm. You need to have the people skills. You need to wonder why is Angela sitting that way or looking mm. that way. You can't just know this, 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 this. You've got to be able to read and go, okay, she's upset. She's Yep. Yeah, no, I was going to say, because like in every uni course just about these days, psychology is like a core unit. That's it's like right. any That's mm. right, any because you're course. working with people. Yeah. So, you know? yeah. like so, so that's IQ and then EQ. So what about we as Christians have mm. another level we have to work on? Really, it's our spiritual intelligence. What is spiritual intelligence? What do you mean? Now, I'm not talking about uh, in spiritual intelligence as in IQ intelligence so like yeah. not your bible knowledge yeah. sure. i'd say more like maturity spiritual maturity, spiritual maturity. okay anyone else yeah. give it a go that's that's right spiritual. so is that just walking closer with yeah. jesus well, is it As now we're putting right. in a leadership is it, is context it's it, it more okay. like being okay. aware sort of, like sort of applying that to your life type thing sort of being aware applying to your life and now put it into a leadership context Remember, we're learning leadership, so, so we're talking being, about being aware of other people's spiritual intelligence. Yeah, being aware of appropriately, that we're responsible for our spiritual way. So yeah, we're responsible for like Matt was saying, we can't like prophesy all like condemnation and hell over people. Sure, you know that you, you've got to be <laughs> uplifting <laughs> them and you yeah. know in, in a blessing way when you prophesy sure. over people. Sure, uplifting. So, yeah. so in, in a in a leadership context, spiritual mm. intelligence would be being aware of the spiritual atmosphere mm. in, around people. Mm. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. Being aware of spiritual atmosphere in a service. Mm. Being aware of spiritual atmosphere in the connect group. Being aware of spiritual atmosphere in your family. Being aware of spiritual atmosphere in your company, mm. in your employment. Right. We, as a leader of that area, so if you're running a business, we go intelligent, uh, uh, IQ is this is what we need to do for a business, EQ is this is how we need to treat our customers, mm. right, and our staff. SQ would be what's the spiritual atmosphere in the place? Even though we've got the IQ done and the EQ done, there's a bit of yuck. Mm. Yeah. And why is there a bit of yuck? There's a bit of gossiping, there's a bit of infighting, there's a bit of oppression, there's a bit of lack of, you know what I mean? And, and understanding the SQ, the spiritual intelligence, right. understands going on awareness wise why do I feel this way when I come here what do we yeah. need to change yeah, like in the atmosphere mm. in my house what I'm aware enough to know that there's more than two levels mm. totally. do you understand what I'm saying mm. so spiritual awareness would be uh, yeah, intelligence would be being able to be aware of what's going on in the spiritual realm around the areas that I have to lead okay so um, so in a it, it, yeah. I know, sorry. I'm just oh, sorry. So we need to understand when it comes to SQ, 
is that we set the atmosphere. We set the atmosphere. Believe it or not, you and I get to set the atmosphere for everything and every area of our life that we have authority over. Mm -hmm. Whatever we have authority over, we get to set the atmosphere. And so that includes family, that includes work, that includes uh, relationships, that includes services or church, connect group, ministry, Joel Shalaya <coughs> sets the atmosphere for whatever God has given me leadership over. Right. Okay? But before you can set the atmosphere, the first thing you need to do is be aware of the atmosphere. It's funny. You can come to a immerse prayer nights mm. every month, and every month it's a different atmosphere. Yeah. Sure. Sometimes you get there and it's it's ugh. sometimes you get there and you can't stop praying. Mm. Yeah. Same with staff meeting or Sunday services. Sometimes it's like open heaven from the first prayer. It's like shh. <laughs> <laughs> people getting fallen on power of God. People coming to Christ, and the next thing is like, whoa, am I in the wrong chair? Whoa, whoa. Mm. What's, what's, yeah. what's what's whoa. different? Wow. Now part of it is the spiritual atmosphere in your own life. Yeah. Okay, because you're you're looking through your own lens. Okay, so if I'm tired, if I'm not going well with God, if I'm struggling with my marriage, if I'm, you know, whatever, going through something, if I'm in pain, that's going to colour how I read what's going on. So people who get up, uh, you know, I, I'm speaking with our campus pastor sometimes, and how's the weekend? Oh, it was really, really tough. It was a tough week at blah, blah, blah campus. But why? I just think it just went da 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 And the first thing I say to them is, how are you? Mm. What do you mean? Are you tired? Were you distracted? Were you annoyed? Mm. Were you annoyed because someone said they were going to do something and they didn't do it and that just tainted you a little? And then you read something else or you looked at something else and it tainted you a little? And yeah. you turned back to the first time and realized that no one was there, tainted you a little? And over time, you closed off from actually reading the atmosphere and reading it wrongly. I had to mm. sit with one campus pastor down and say to him, hey listen, I'm preaching, I can sense God in the place, but I sense you're closed up. And I said, if you set the atmosphere as a mm. campus pastor, and as a senior pastor, I'm ministering and I'm seeing all these people getting touched except you, because you're closed up and you're giving out the vibe of you're annoyed mm. at something. Yeah, well. Wow. You need to change because it's just that so many things didn't work out properly. Da, 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 da. I said, I don't care. You're going to have to master that. Yeah. Not let it master you. It yeah. doesn't matter if the news didn't work out and this person didn't turn up for their roster. And da, 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 da. When that service starts, I need you to be mature spiritually mm. enough to go, soul, come under control. Yeah. I'm going to set the atmosphere. Mm. Okay? Yeah. And then. To do that, I need to be aware of the atmosphere. Yeah. One, in my own life, and two, in the place that I'm serving. Very good, PJ. So good. Yes, yes. Now, in your own life, <laughs> I remember, um, Sharon and I had this conversation, and she shares it, so it's not a problem. But when she's just starting, uh, when we were married, uh, I'm like at the front and it's time to pray for people and stuff like that. She goes, what happens if you're not right? Not. Yeah. It's like you're always on. Yeah, mm. true. What happens if you're not right? I said, God's given us a wonderful opportunity to get right from the back of the auditorium to the front. <laughs> yeah. So I need, cool. like, Love that. If I'm not right, I've got about 10 rows of chairs to get right. Yeah. That's very good, PJ. That's awesome. I'm walking to the okay. front, Lord. Uh, before Is I that get always up enough, though? <laughs> Is that always enough? What a BO. Yeah. Yes. It is. Why like not? The blood of Jesus covered everything. Mm. The, the only resistance is not God, it's me. Yeah. I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. So if there is rebellion, it's not God's rebellion. Mm. If there is d uh, grief, it's not God's grief. Mm. If there is uh, pride, it's not God's pride. It's really one way. Mm. Totally. The yeah. covenant is open, one-sided. Yeah. You know, so, so I've got 
15 meters of repentance. I've got 15 meters of I've got to get that right. I've got 15 meters of God, I've got to let that go. Yeah. I've got 15 meters of God, I can't believe I did that again. I've got 15 meters of God, I don't feel good enough. I've got 15 meters of God, can you really use me? I don't know, but I'm going to trust you. I've got 15 meters. Maddington's even shorter. Val Diver's even shorter. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, so she said, well, what happens if you're not right? I said, yeah. well, you've got the walk. Yeah. You've got the walk to get right. Yeah. Good. Mm. But don't ever come to the front without being right. Mm. You don't have that opportunity. Don't yeah, ever get yeah. onto the pulpit without being right. Mm. Don't ever get onto a college setting. Now I'm just mourning on the way to God. And so I look at it, I'm so tired. I'm so da 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 da. But God, I cannot, I can I know I cannot even think to come and speak to five people from Joel's experience without your anointing and your Holy Spirit damages people, it damages the, the call of God, I can't do it, I need your help. Mm-hmm. As I'm driving here, that's, that's all I had. So you've got the walk, okay? So you have to learn to own, deal with, and get like, you don't, there's no, there's no earning with God. Okay, so that's one thing we've got to get out of our system. I blew it. So now God's upset with me, and so I've got to earn back, be good for that another week before I can be used by God. No. Mm. I used to think it's climbing this spiritual mountain, yeah. and I fell off. Oh, well, we're going to start climbing again, and then I'll get back to that place. No, not true. If you do that, you're actually relying on your own mm. good yeah. works. Wow. That's pride. Mm. So what you have to understand is we fall, we ask him to forgive us, And he, who is at the top, swaps places with us. Mm. And we're back. Perfect in Christ, Jesus, again. Justified, redeemed, healed, forgiven, back. God can flow through us, God can speak through us, God can use us. We can be a blessing to others. We are whole in Christ Jesus. Mm. There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. There is no... Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. It was instant teleportation, uh-huh. instant swapping mm. from falling to being back in rightful standing. That's why Paul says, You are seated in Christ in heavenly places, mm. with Christ in heavenly places. Yeah. What does that mean? You're there, you're not here. Mm. You're not, oh, I'm going to start all over again. Yeah, well, that's right. I'm going to have to do another three weeks of fasting and praying before yeah. uh, I'm even worthy of ministering to people. Mm. Mm. Can't yeah. do it. You yeah. can't. You're never worthy. Yeah, well. You're just transported. Mm. Yeah. That's how you see yourself. Yeah, well. So that walk is a walk of realignment. And that walk is a walk of getting things right. Mm. <laughs> because in the end of that walk, you're wanting to bless people. Wow. And that's God's heart. Is this different? Are you, are you okay? How, how, yeah. you doing? how are you taking this? Yeah. Talk to me. Oh, it's true, right. Every uh, every single week when I'm coming to Drama Rama, I know I've done the preparation, I know what we're doing, mm. but in that drive from my house to here, yeah. I have nerves in my stomach and I just turn to the Holy Spirit and say, I can't do this, mm. I can't do it, mm. I need you to be with mm. me and, and then I can, I can do it with you. And I get through it every week and mm. I'm not nervous. Yeah. But in the drive, when I first start driving, every week I'm nervous. Yeah. 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 You know, just, I'm as only 10, but in front of 10 people, it feels like 100. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thoughts? Mm. Yeah. Sure. Sarah, any thoughts? Yeah, I'm just thinking, like, it's so cool because, like, that's what that's what God wants for us like that's why the Holy Spirit is accessible to everyone so like you know it's in that those moments mm. it's in our everyday that we need to be yeah. having those exchanges and that, that's what I've just been reminded of and I can just like me personally as well like uh, worship leading mm. like there are some mornings there where I'm in the car and I'm like oh my gosh like I yeah I didn't sleep yeah, well really I know my voice isn't great like um, I'm just like you know feeling in a bit of that like and then even sensing like other people in the team as well you can sense that there's something not quite yeah. right and you know that's why I always love to kind of go through explanations but then always before we actually start practicing songs just pray 
and then absolutely mm. it changes yeah. the yeah. whole wish it's a, mm. so it's a, yeah. yeah good maddie any thoughts no yeah it's good like like the other two like practically like um yeah i definitely in use lots of things go wrong yeah like and it's very easy to get flustered and just like and frustrated and that sort of thing so like even just like it's when you see like the wharf like just something that like yeah i think i need to put into practice a bit better like, rather than letting like letting it all like let it show or bubble out or let it mm. let it overflow mm. into the service or into mm. the program but like, i can you know like so it's good it's very practical and very um yeah something that i definitely want to do a bit more something I'm really working on so yeah. I think that's really good and very what practical which is good. Once you're aware yeah. of your own self yeah. and you've dealt with it on the walk totally. and you're noticing what's in the environment mm. Mm. and you realise that you are the atmosphere setter mm. Mm. so it really starts with that yeah. and goes to that yeah. totally. so it just needs to be a revelation yeah. Yeah, totally. That's really good. I never but then there's number three I never thought of it in that way because like yeah. for me I'm very aware of my emotions so like for me uh, when I'm like feeling a certain way I like compose myself and stuff like mm. I understand the way I'm feeling but I've never never thought to bring that into the spiritual context and mm. like, like you know what I mean so that's, yeah. that's really cool I'm going to develop this into a, a leadership teaching pra- yeah. practicing it on you well, <laughs> I love being this <laughs> Once you're aware of the atmosphere, you make sure that your heart's right, you've reined in any ungodly emotions, ungodly thoughts, and then you can see clearly, and you realize the atmosphere is not right. Okay? You must go back to the revelation, I get to set the atmosphere, but it's not right. It's not right, but I have authority over the atmosphere. Okay? So then, you've got to use the keys. What are the keys to transforming atmosphere spiritually? Identifying what's wrong. Yeah. So that's this part here. You're being aware of the atmosphere. You're identifying what's wrong. So let's say the church is distracted. And you're preaching. You're leading your connect group, your, your drama armor, your family, in prayer time, whatever it is, youth group, worship team. And they're not engaging because you sense there's distraction. They're thinking about this, they're worried about that, da 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 what can you do? Yeah. What are the keys? Bring everyone back in. Okay, so that's a practical key. Come on, focus, kids. Mm. Well, we're talking about spiritual intelligence. So that would probably be this one, an emotional, psychological key. Come on, get your focus. Can you, can you turn the building worship, around so you're facing? Worship prayer. Facing. Okay. Worship or prayer. Clever. All right, one spiritual key is prayer. When there's distraction, you have authority to bind up mm-hmm. things distraction mm-hmm. in yeah. heaven. Mm-hmm. And we can't forget that one of the keys of the enemy or one of the strategies of the enemy is to distract people. Mm-hmm. I know I should be doing it, but I'm so busy right now. Mm-hmm. I know I should. So in the name of Jesus, I bind up the spirit of uh, distraction and worry and fear. And Father, I pray for your spirit to come over the minds of the people so that I can focus and hear what the spirit of God is saying. Every other voice I silence in Jesus' name. Mm. Now, if I did that as I'm preaching, that's bad. <laughs> so people go, whoa, you know, yeah. casting out demons and devils, right? Yeah. Mm. But that's what I do when I'm sitting on the front row, standing in the front row, okay? Antennas go up. Distraction, concern, worry, shame, whatever it is, I, I, I identify what it is, I understand that I can set the atmosphere, and the next thing is, God, what is the key to changing the atmosphere? Mm. A lot of time, it okay. is prayer. Yeah, it's good. Mm. A lot of time. But that's not the only one. There's lots of keys. I've read a lot of keys. I'm thinking, why don't people use these keys? It's so mm. good. Prayer is part of it. Okay, pray, and pray in the spirit. Mm. This is why we've been given Holy Spirit, because when I do not know what to pray, mm. that's when you have the Holy Spirit, right? Mm. Sometimes I'm at staff meeting and I'm like, hey, we're in the middle of worship, and this Tuesday was a great example, and I don't know what to pray for. <laughs> I don't know what's <laughs> going on. I don't know. You know, I literally <laughs> feel like that. I don't want to be here. Da, da, da. 
So you just start praying in tongues, praying in mm. tongues, and all of a sudden it becomes like a reservoir. Yeah, mm. great. And the whole atmosphere changed. And then it's like, come in, pull back in. <laughs> it's so hard because everyone's like, Rapa <laughs> shakata It was awesome. Come on, that's it. Atmosphere changes when we pray. Atmosphere yeah. changes when we pray yeah. in the spirit. It's like it becomes electric. Yeah. It becomes like, I feel God all of a sudden. So prayer is a huge key. Fantastic. What's the second key? Spiritual intelligence? This is practically when we're like on stage or things like, for example. Anywhere. You do anywhere. I, found, I think like, you know how you're saying the walk, mm. how you have to get yourself right. What I normally do, if I'm not obviously doing that, um, is if I'm not feeling right and I get my car and put on some worship music and then I'm... Worship. You then get two I feel gold stars again. today. <laughs> worship. Really? Two gold stars. You're right about that one. Oh, it changes, yeah. Changes. Oh, that's that's exactly. Worship changes Fasting. atmosphere. Good. Hold it, don't jump up. That's good. We're <laughs> going to go back to that. Oh, okay. Sorry. So worship absolutely changes atmosphere. Amen. Mm. If you're struggling with home atmosphere, put worship on. I do in the car when the boys drive me crazy. I turn yeah. up so loud I can't hear them anymore. Yeah. And I can just hear the music. Drown them out. <laughs> At night times, we have worship playing throughout the night in our mm. house. So we... Sharon and I, we learned to sleep in worship, the boys learn to sleep in worship. So on my iPad, on the iPhone, we charge it and we have a worship playlist that goes all night and it's on like two, two bars. So it's not really, really loud, but you can hear it. And it's very subtle every night. None of us can sleep without worship. It's beautiful, it fills the house. And basically worship is opening up the atmosphere for the supernatural to come down. When you worship, it's not you giving God a gift or singing or anything like that. All worship is, is a welcome, opening the gates for all of heaven, angels to ascend and descend. And of course, when an angel walks into the room, the atmosphere changes. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. yeah. Every time an angel came into the room, the atmosphere changed. Mary, yeah. Joseph, whenever they saw the angel, it was like, wow. And that's actually what's happening. Did you know that? But mm. during our worship services, some people go, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit. Actually, maybe he's on the inside, but I felt like all over here. Yeah, yeah, that's actually angels in our midst wow. during yeah. worship. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah, because throughout the Bible, throughout the Gospels, in the New Testament, angels were doing the bidding of God. I was putting it down to Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm. Just focusing more on it. But yeah. Yeah. Of course, you know, like when Jesus was in the, in the desert, Bible says, and the angel, after he denied himself and resisted the devil, Bible says, and angels went and ministered to him. Mm. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is in us, mm. but angels are around yeah. us. We believe that demons are around us. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we just need to understand. So yeah, and, and, and Jacob, when he had that vision, the, the veil was lifted and he saw angels ascending and descending. Can I tell you, that is an amazing encouragement for prayer. Mm, yeah. Okay, so what was happening was angels were descending and ascending. So they were coming down first. God was sending them to us to help us, to minister to us, to, to do his bidding, to bring his word. Mm. And then they were going up. What were they going? In prayer. Mm. So every time you pray, it's a bit down. The house of God, everywhere you pray is a Bethel. Basically, you're changing that room to a place where angels are ascending and descending, going before the throne of God, bringing them. Isn't that powerful? And of course, we also have the Holy Spirit in us. So two-thirds of the angels are for us, so we already have victory. We have the Holy Spirit in us, we already have victory, and we have the Lord of all for us. Yeah. If God mm, for us, right. who could be against it? Mm. We, there's no option but to win if you're a Christian. Yeah. There's no option but victory. Amen. <laughs> so mm. when I say you've got the uh, uh, ability to set the atmosphere, you've got to believe it. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, mm. regardless of what that knee is and what that tongue says. All right? So number one, prayer is prayer and the spirit. Number two, Worship, what's another key? Transforming atmosphere. Fasting. Fasting. Okay, great. We don't get fasting in our Western culture. Mm. How can stopping yourself from eating do something? But what fasting does is it sensitizes you to the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere. Right. So fasting itself 
doesn't change the atmosphere, but it shows you very clearly the keys. Mm. After a good fast, you know what to do. Yeah. After a real fast, you're more sensitive and go, oh, oh, what we need to do is pray into this. We need to deal with that. We need to, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, another atmosphere changer. There's lots. I was thinking about what well, Caroline gave us a talk on thankfulness before, and I thought every time we have communion, it just really makes me yeah. more thankful. So things like that, not like the actual act of it, but the fact that it makes you more sort of, yeah, okay. I don't know, grateful. It just reminds you of what has been given for you. Yeah. So gratefulness, thanksgiving, you know, the Bible says, mm -hmm. and the disciples devoted themselves to apostles' teaching, to prayer, okay. to fellowship, and to the breaking of bread. Mm -hmm. I think that's weird. And the breaking of bread is talking about communion. Mm -hmm. So they like made sure they had word, they made sure they had fellowship, they made sure they had prayer, and they made sure they had communion. Mm -hmm. You know? Because every time it drew them closer to God. Mm -hmm. Every time you honor somebody, the atmosphere changes. Every time. Every time you celebrate somebody, honor somebody, put respect onto somebody, it's like everyone goes, ah. It breaks down walls. It breaks down walls. Mm. So, uh, one of the first things they did when they became the state president in the midst of so much conflict is they honored the older, I honored pastors that had been pastors in their place for more than 15 years. And then there was 30 of them. Honored them, got them up the front, one after the other, to the guy that was a pastor for 35 years in one, wow. one location. Oh. Gave him a gift, and everything broke at the conference. Everyone was like, We just love this new state president, we love this movement. The atmosphere was different. And I was like, Whoa, what a great conference! Yeah, because honor does that. Mm -hmm. Come on, honoring God's those who have the authority of God on their life, you know. So, even you know, with Matt, he's a great man, he's your husband. But when we are, he's one of our church members, but when we honor him as a politician, as a government leader, mm. our church goes, wow, something just lifts. Even though they see him every week, mm. but when we put him up there as the government leader that we want to honor, mm. something changes mm. the yeah. atmosphere. Honor is, it, it just mm. does change the atmosphere. What else? What else changes the atmosphere? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so these are not hard things, right? Mm. Oh, but question. When you say word, I'm just going to add prophetic. Message. Sometimes things can be going really hard in a service or whatever, and someone has a prophetic message and they speak it out and just it just lifts. Mm. Everything lifts, everything changes. A word mm. in season. Constantly bringing the word to a, a, a body, mm. to a family, to a business, you know, that will actually change um, the atmosphere in the place. The word is extremely powerful, sharper than a double edged sword. There is no atmosphere that can stand against the word of God. It will prevail forever. It's mm. eternal. It is life. Mm. What else? Getting right with God and making sure that there's some area that's not right yeah, with God. Yeah, repentance. Yeah? Sometimes you have to leave the church in repentance. That's it. The youth in repentance. The family in repentance something that you've done you know, yeah. that will change an atmosphere totally it's awesome like you know you do those old, sometimes then the altar calls you like you get people to come to the front type thing but that yeah yeah it's yeah. awesome really sure atmosphere changes yeah. doesn't yeah. it what else anything else mm. um, obedience when you get a yeah. So that's more on a personal yep. kind of like truth. Okay. So that's a Can personal you, know, you resist in God mm. and you obey. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. What mm. else? Would would be like mentors and stuff, like accountability sort of. I know it's probably a little bit off more on the emotional. Mm. Yeah, I think that's yeah. more a personal thing. Okay. It's spiritual intelligence for leadership. Yeah, okay. Mm. Fellowship. Sorry? Fellowship. Sweet fellowship, true fellowship, mm. authentic mm. fellowship. When, when somebody, I remember when uh, the politician, um, Melissa Park, 
who was a Labour federal minister, and I, I wouldn't say she's anti God. I'd just say she's anti church. Mm. You know, and um, and I remember she walked in here when we did our first political leaders thing like this. You know, she was forced to be here type thing election year, so set up. <laughs> and you know, she saw her opponent, Matt Taylor was her opponent and at the at one particular stage and saw some of the other from the Green Party and this party and she sat here like this and Sharon sat next to her. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and so Sharon's like, so tell me about that. And next thing you know, it literally I'm not joking, you literally saw this woman melt all the guards as Sharon just oh they were laughing and she turned towards Sharon and she was leaning and Sharon here talked all night, just yep, 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 on, 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 on. Three and a half hours later, right, she left. Next year we did it. Came back here and this was when, um, I think this was the Kevin Rajuli Gillard spill. Um, you know, so very bad time in politics for a Labour candidate. <laughs> And she literally flew in from Canberra and came to the dinner. And I, I greeted her at the door and I said, I'm so glad you're here. I said, How are you? Because uh, everyone's like, Labour is this, Labour is that, that's that. We didn't vote this person in, da 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 da. Mm. And she said, It is a toxic week, toxic season in Canberra. I said, I know. And I said, But you know, you're safe here. And she grabs my arm. sorts of stuff some may have been true some may not have been true it doesn't matter you to get in politics you've got to have really really thick skin to like this and not stepping into wanting to step into a church and the bigots and the homophobes and the whatever mm -hmm. and then having to because of election mm -hmm. <laughs> and i'll just be here for half an hour show my face and then literally just being greeted by sweet fellowship that washes over you and washes your feet mm -hmm. and it's like a welcome home you are loved here. No, no, we're not going to do that. No, we're not going to do that to you. No, we're not going to do that to you. Come on. Mm. So we had another one. We had a lesbian uh, Greens candidate here. And, you know, um, and we, we had um, two gifts, like a male gift and a female gift, a male gift and a female gift, so the partners can come. And anyway, her partner couldn't come. And I said, oh, you know, is, is everything okay? And, and she was quite emotional all of a sudden. And she goes, yes, my partner, I didn't know this, she was a lesbian, but she goes, yeah, my partner's got breast cancer. And then she caught herself. Oh my gosh, the church now knows um, that I, I'm in a relationship with a girl. Yeah. And, you know, and I said, I would really like to pray for her. She started to like tear up. And then we prayed for her. And I went and I went and got another girl and put it next to her so she would go home with two yeah. girls just instead of a guy yeah. and a girl. Yeah. Wow. 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 She just grabbed my hand. I really hope at the end of three hours, I really hope I get to see you again. Come on. Okay. <laughs> That's great, man. Cool. See how That's true cool. fellowship can change the atmosphere mm. Mm. in someone's life. And it's true, we've all experienced it. Yeah. We've all been when we're like this and go in there and someone's love and somebody's gentleness and somebody's kindness has just melted out. I mean, your mother made a beautiful story. She walked into this place after a tough history in another church and just the love of the, the host at the front door. Mm. <laughs> She's like, Poof! Uh, just burst into tears in the foyer, <laughs> right? You because her in. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, she just burst into tears, and I just remember putting my arm around her and just talking to her and loving her and hugging her, and and you know, seven years passed, and she's mm -hmm. a pillar in the house. But all it is is just that people carry hurts; mm -hmm. they affect the atmosphere, and we have the authority to change the atmosphere. And one of the keys is actually real fellowship. Mm -hmm. So what you need to work out as leaders, this is what 
and try and develop for that campus fast. It's like every Sunday, you have to work out the atmosphere yeah. and you've got to give me the keys. Because I'm not there. Mm. So you've got to work out what's going on in Drama Armour and what's the key to breaking that atmosphere that day. What's going on in your family and what is the key? Is it Thanksgiving? Mm. Is it testimony? Is it worship? Is it prayer? You've got to work out what's going on in the worship service there beforehand and mm. ask God for the key. And the key might be, come on, we're going to praise Him. Why don't you just praise Him? Why don't you just remember something good that God's done for you today? Come on, let's lift up our voice and praise Him today. Or let's honor da 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 da. You know, she's mm. always leading us in worship from the, from the congregation. So love having you here. We're going to be praising God together today. Maybe it's an encouragement. Mm. Or it is so good to see you. Listen, I'm so glad you came to church today. I'm so glad you came to be a part of this. We're going to worship God together. It's a real fellowship. Mm. You can actually develop that. You know, so yeah. when you're up there, you're sensing, what do I need to do as a leader? To, what keys do I need to change the atmosphere? Because I am the atmosphere set. Yeah. And often in a service, the leader is going, Holy Spirit, tell me what we need to do. Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? How do we break this thing? If you're not thinking like that, you're not experienced. Nanny, you get that? Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Smiling over here. So, it, you know, when you're running a service, when you're running a connect group, when you're running a family, when you're running a business, you've got to think about the atmosphere. Mike Connell said when he was uh, a chemistry teacher in school, he just felt like, oh, the atmosphere in the school, the teachers burn out all the time. But Principal burns out all the time, and mm. the kids are really rough, and there's lots of rebellion and violence. And he's stuck in here as a high school um, chemistry teacher. And he goes, What do I need to do to change the atmosphere? So he got in there half an hour early, and he just laid hands on every sick. He said, In the name of Jesus, whoever sits here will have peace. I declare whoever sits here will have peace. I declare I open heaven over here. I rebuke the work of the enemy. One hour before, half an hour before school starts, did that for just a couple of weeks. His atmosphere in his class changed, the students' grades changed, the whole school changed, the violence dropped, the expulsion dropped, the suspension dropped. And it's not because he was a great teacher, it wasn't because of his IQ, it wasn't even because of his EQ, which obviously he worked on because you need all three. He was an understanding of the spiritual values that you have. Very important. Yeah. And as we come to your last few sessions, I just want to give you some really key pieces. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not about volunteering, it's not about the practical solution. This stuff is gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get this, this is gold. Really yeah. much. Cool closing comments, closing thoughts. Anybody, anybody. Mm. Or you're just in shock and amazement. Don't oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so worship me, I'm just a man. Yeah. <laughs> just letting you know we finish at 12.30. Yeah. Okay. I've got to finish you early because such a over the front All right. I just yeah. think um, it's really good. Like, quite often I find the atmosphere of my house once the boys get together is um, I need the keys. And I, yeah, it's really good because there's a few there that I don't try. So I will try them. Right. Because sometimes I'm just like, yeah, I feel like I'm banging my head against a brick wall with them. Mm. So, yeah. It's good. Try this with your kids. Mm. So, one thing we've decided is we won't talk bad about each other. So if one kid talks bad, not only will he get a punishment, not only does he have to get his sorry, he now has to rebuild the confidence of the person he smashed. Oh. Otherwise, the punishment continues. Mm. And it's not like, I like you because of your shoes. <laughs> you think that's funny? Because that's what they do. They yeah. know. So you think that's funny? Yeah. You smashed him down with for calling him stupid. And you think you can come and you can say, I like you because of your shoes. Mm. Go back into the room, another half an hour. Come back when you actually have something easy to say to your mm. brother that will build him up after you walk in there. Mm. So now we don't even need to, because when they start getting like that, they realize, oh, 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 oh your dad hears it. You know? Mm. And, and yeah, and even if they're mucking around silly sometimes, you know, so when they get in that silly mode, mm. and it's just a little bit of pull, a little bit of pull, a little bit of pull, especially school holidays. It's yeah. just a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. You stop, you mm. go to the room, get a pen and paper, 
write me a letter to Noah about how wonderful he is. Mm. That letter better be good because I'm reading it. Mm. And so literally, um, well, to his face, you tell him mm. why you love him and what God sees in him. Right, okay. So honor. Okay. Mm. It's good. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do we have to? You bet you have to <laughs> because of what you said. Mm. You know? And they'll all deny it. Right, Dad, I don't need it. Aww. No, you need it. We mm. all need it. Yeah. Yeah. We need to know what God's seeing and, and how good that is. Yeah. So, honor is a good one. Prophetic message um, sharing with your children why you call them what you call them or what dream God gave you for their heart or what word God gave you when you were praying for them. That is so important. Mm. You know, we were called Levites because we were called. Come on. So you have been dedicated to the Lord from the day you were born. And I remember the first time I held you when you were born and the tears that ran down my face because I remember thinking, God, how can I love somebody that hasn't even opened his eyes yet or mm. said a single word? So before you even said that, I loved you. Mm. So there's nothing you can say to stop me loving you. Before you did anything, I loved you. And therefore, there's nothing you can do to stop me from loving you. It's mm. not what you have done, but who you are. So Come on, never that's forget that. Mm. That's me prophesying into their life. Oh, you know? Okay. Very, very powerful. Mm. Thoughts? Mm. Really, really good. Like, it, like from everywhere, it's kind of just, mm. God's just like going, like yeah. light bulb, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. So write these keys down, and then you switch through your, your handbag. <laughs> Which key do I need today? And sometimes, like, as you're learning this one, you're like, this key? Yeah, not working. <laughs> uh, this key? Ooh, yeah, that has true. a little bit. Oh, this key. Oh, that changed the whole atmosphere. Yeah, I'm going to do that again. Wow. Yeah. So you start getting a little bit used to the keys in your handbag. Mm. Yeah. You know, and you build a life on it. Mm. Closing thoughts? Fantastic. Good. You know, cool. useful. Just learn to use it. Yeah, very practical. Yeah. 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 All right, done.